In this video, I'm going to work out some examples using the U substitution or change of variables. I actually have a lot of examples and I don't want to make the video too long. So this is just going to be part one and I hope to do part two later. So the first example is to find the definite integral from zero to three of sine of pi theta d theta. So our inside is pi theta. I'll let u equal pi theta. That's inside the sine function here. Take differentials of both sides. So I'll just have du equals pi times d theta. And solve that for d theta. Uh, du over pi. Now let me change the bounds. First the lower bound. So when theta equals zero, remember these bounds are written in terms of theta. This is theta equals zero and theta equals three. So I want to change those to be in terms of u. I'll use the formula u equals pi times theta. So pi times zero will give me zero. So now u equals zero. Let's change the upper bound. Again, this is theta equals three. So when theta equals three, I'll take three and multiply it times pi. And I'll say u equals three pi. So now let's write the new integral in terms of u. Everything should be in terms of u. So I have my new bounds going from 0 to 3 pi. I replaced pi theta with just u and I replaced d theta with du over pi. So I'll just factor the 1 over pi out in front of the integral and find the antiderivative of sine of u, that's negative cosine of u. Note that I still have the multiplying factor 1 over pi, and then I'll evaluate that between 0 and 3 pi. So remember the first thing to do, I'll go ahead and replace u with 3 pi, and I get negative cosine of 3 pi, Notice also that what I decided to do was keep this multiplying constant outside these big brackets. So now I just have to substitute u equals zero into my antiderivative and just a quick uh, check here, cosine of three pi because the period of cosine is two pi cosine of 3 pi is the same as cosine of pi, which is negative 1. And cosine of 0 is just 1. So I still have the 1 over pi. I have the minus sign. And then negative 1 is what cosine of 3 pi equals. Over here, I just went ahead and I said, oh, well, this is a minus a minus 1, which will make a plus 1. So take care with all of these signs. And in fact, now it looks like inside the brackets, I'll have one plus one, which will make two times one over pi, which is two over pi. All right, here in our second example, we're taking the integral from zero to three, radical well, t over radical t plus one. So the most complicated function here is the radical. So I look inside that radical and there's t plus one. So u is going to equal t plus one. Well, that makes things a little bit simple because then du is just dt. No need to solve for dt. And let's do the bounds. When the lower bound t equals zero, then I'll use this formula here, u equals t plus 1, so 0 plus 1 will give me 1. And the same idea with the upper bound. 
and t equals 3, I use the formula u equals t plus 1. So 3 plus 1, u will equal 4. Now let's make all of our substitutions and write our integral in terms of u. So bounds 1 to 4, replace t plus 1 with u, replace dt with du, and moment of panic, I still have a t in there. I can't use anything else that I know if I have two variables inside the integrand. But all right, the moment of panic is going to pass because if we look over here with our u substitution, u equals t plus 1, well, I can actually solve that and write it as t equals u minus 1. So I can replace this t with the expression u minus 1, and now I can proceed. Now I still have quite a bit of work to do just with the integrand before I can think about taking the antiderivative. As it is written, there is no rule that can help me. But if I start by uh, replacing the radical u with u to the one half power, then divide each term in the numerator by u to the one half power, I can write that as the difference of two powers. I can write that as the definite integral from one to four, u to the one half power minus u to the negative one half power. Now I'll take the antiderivative and evaluate that uh, from one to four. And that'll give me, well, hmm, in order to evaluate these fractional indices, I think it's useful to at least think of them or even better yet, write them out in terms of a radical. So u to the three halves power, remember the two tells me it's a square root, the three says I'll have to take the cube of it after I take the square root. And now I'll go ahead and do the evaluation. I'll put four in place of my u. So I'll get the two thirds radical four cubed minus two radical four and subtract off substituting one in the place of u. And so in my first set of parentheses, it simplifies to 16 over 3 minus 4. Second set of parentheses, I just get 2 thirds minus 2. And the way I like to work these out when I have this mix of fractions and whole numbers is that I'll look at the fractions as like terms. So I'll say 16 thirds minus 2 thirds. That'll give me 14 thirds. And then I'll look at the whole numbers negative 4 minus a negative 2. So that's negative 4 plus 2 gives me negative 2. And so then I only uh, work with fractions and whole numbers, combining them together in one uh, expression. So I write that with a common denominator, and it works out to 8 thirds, 8 over 3. Now, there's an alternative u substitution we can use when we have radical expressions. I think it's easier. Maybe you prefer what we just did. You're going to get the same answer. And uh, I think that this expression is easier to work with because you don't get the fractions in the exponents. But that's my choice, and you may choose something different. So the alternative u substitution is we're going to let u equal radical t plus 1. Before we just took u equals t plus 1, we're going to let u equal radical t plus 1. And before I take differentials, because I don't want to take differentials with the radical, I'll just square both sides. Then I take the differential of each side, and that gives me dt equals 2u du. So it's already solved for dt. And I'm looking ahead, and I see that I still have this t, 
in the numerator of the integrand. So I'll go ahead and solve u squared equals t plus one for t, and that means t equals u squared minus one. Now let's go ahead and do the bounds. Uh, and t equals zero. Remember u now is going to be radical t plus one, but radical zero plus one is still just going to be one. And then upper bound, when t equals 3, u is going to be radical 3 plus 1, it means radical 4, so u will equal 2. So again, that came from radical 3 plus 1. All right, making our substitutions, what did I do here? I put in my new bounds, I replaced the t with u squared minus one. I replace the radical, the whole thing, radical t plus one now is u. And then my dt is replaced with two u du. And so we can see some nice simplification to use. I have a u over u, which equals one. The two I can go ahead and uh, bring out in front of the integral sign. And so now I'm left with just a polynomial. So not so much work to do in the integrand here. So I just have a polynomial u squared minus one. And let's go ahead and find the antiderivative there and evaluate that from one to two. And so First, I'll go ahead and put in two in the place of u. Then I'll go ahead and put in one. I mentally did one cubed equals one. That's why it's just one third. And again, I will uh, look at this as having eight thirds minus one third. So the fractions I'll do first inside the brackets. That gives me 7 thirds. Then I'll do the whole numbers, negative 2 minus a negative 1. So that'd be negative 2 plus 1. So that gives me a negative 1. Then I'll go ahead and do the fractions inside the brackets. I'll write the negative 1 as negative 3 over 3. And that leads to the same answer I had before, which is 8 thirds. Here in example three, we have an indefinite integral. And so inside the radical sign, I have x squared plus 4x. And one thing that's different in this example is that when I take the differentials of both sides, I have to take the differential of each term. So now I have two terms here. And so I need to put those in parentheses because all that whole expression is being multiplied by dx. And I'm going to do one step of algebra. I'm going to factor out a 2 from the right hand side here. And why did I do that? Because looking at my integrand, I have x plus 2. And so I'd like to have in parentheses x plus 2 so that I can do the algebra after the substitution in a simpler way. So solving for du then, uh, I mean, yes, dx, I'll have du over 2 parentheses x plus 2. Making my substitutions back into the integrand, uh, dx gets replaced with du du over 2 parentheses x plus 2. And that's good because I have x plus 2 above the division bar in the original integrand. Remember that acts as a grouping symbol. So really I can think of that as being x plus 2 in parentheses. And I replace the x squared plus 4x with u. And so after doing that, I'm left with uh, only u and a fairly simple integrand, which I'll just write 
as a power, so I can use the power rule. Go ahead and find my antiderivative. I'll add one to negative one half. That gives me positive one half. The, I would have to divide by one half, but dividing by one half is the same as multiplying by two. I still have that original one half. So one half of two will be one. And of course, I have to replace the u with my original variable, which was x squared plus 4x. So my final antiderivative is x squared plus 4x raised to the power of 1 half. And of course, I need to keep my plus c. Now we can check this answer. We can check any antiderivative. If we take the derivative of the antiderivative, we should get something equivalent to the original integrand. So if I take the derivative here, uh, the derivative of the constant is 0. I'll need to use the power rule and then the chain rule. So 1 half comes out in front. I have the uh, negative. 1 half is my new exponent. The derivative of the inside is 2x plus 4. And from the work that we already did, we know if I take 2x plus 4 and multiply it by 1 half, that will just be x plus 2. So that winds up being a, writing it as a fraction, x plus 2 over quantity x squared plus 4x to the 1 half power. And of course, to the 1 half power is the same as the radical. So good. That checks out. So I'm going to stop here at the end of this example. And I'm going to create another video uh, with more examples, uh, seeing more variations on these different techniques.